Now, Sports Talk with Broads. Here's Hunter Brody. It's hysterical. It's literally hysterical that this baseball team falls apart all the damn time. See, this is why I'm confused with my life. This morning, literally this morning, I recorded a podcast talking about how the Phillies were boring, there were so many injuries, the buzz seemed to be lost. After that Marlins series, it seemed like they ripped all the fun out of my chest. Not like there was an extreme amount of fun to begin with, but I enjoyed the emotional roller coaster. But that Marlins series, it took a lot out of me, that dumpster fire of a performance, right? Yet here I am, the same day. I mean, this is night. This is the nighttime. I recorded the podcast in the morning. This is now night after the Phillies game. And I'm fired the hell up. And I'm disgusted. I'm pissed off. I'm heated. And I want to... I don't know what that means I want to do, but it's... By the way, we are broadcasting live from the Manscaped Man Cave. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code BROD at manscaped.com. But look, this team, it's so irritating. If I could strangle the Philadelphia Phillies, not the individual players as a whole, okay? Let's not take this too personal and too an extreme. But just this Philadelphia Phillies team as a whole would strangle it and go, come on! I would! Zach Wheeler gives you seven and a third. Strong performance. Allowed three earned runs. The Phillies were up 4 nothing early. He allowed three earned runs in his seven and one third, but he definitely did his job. You need to rely on your bullpen at some point. And, and there's fans out there that are freaking out on Joe Girardi. You got to let him stay. He's at 95 pitches. Why even allow him in the eighth inning if you're going to pull him anyway? I can't blame Joe Girardi. I can't blame him. In baseball, you have a bullpen who is supposed to come in and get you out when you need it. It's not his fault that Well, Adam Morgan gets rocked, and Adam Hazley doesn't know what the hell to do out in right field, and he misplays the ball. Defense is your strong suit. Defense is who you are. Yet you have a pathetic effort out in right field, which costs the team. And it's not Joe Girardi's fault that Hector Neris drops the baseball. He dropped the ball in the ninth with the man on first base, and it's a balk. And they get second base for free. Oh, well, Broads, they have alternatives. They don't need to go to Hector Neris. Okay, who do you want? Workman? <laughs> Hembry? <laughs> Anybody else? Late innings? Tommy Hunter, it's probably your best bet, which is sad, by the way. Actually, JoJo Romero. To be fair, JoJo Romero is probably the best bet, which is still, realistically, a joke. I don't blame Joe Girardi. Wins are important, but in baseball, you need a bullpen to step in. He clearly has a fingernail issue. You wouldn't really know by the way he pitched, but it's a concern that they need to make sure that they handle it properly. He did his job. He did his job. I blame the bullpen. Hector Neris, don't drop the baseball. And, oh, oh, just, oh. I was going to say, and as bad as that was, Adam Hazy, what the hell are you doing? You need to make that play. And then we can get to Bryce Harper, who is pathetic at the moment. It's gross. It really is gross what you're seeing out of Bryce Harper. Strike out, strike out, strike out. And as mad as I am with him, and as much as I don't think he should be getting a free pass at all, were they not in the position to win? With or without Bryce Harper, because clearly they're without him right now with the 0 for 5 day, They were in a position. They had a lead. The bullpen came in, and the lead was lost. And it's a common theme, and it happens over and over and over again. And guess what? There are teams sniffing the playoffs right underneath the Phillies that I think they're going to snatch it. 
And I'm not putting any excuse on injuries. Yeah, there's no denying that JT Real Muto makes a difference. There's no denying that Reese Hoskins makes a difference when it comes to the power and scoring runs. I don't care. Because I've seen this bullpen blow so many damn leads even when they were in the lineup. Even when they were scoring runs with those two individuals batting. It didn't matter. This is the identity of the team. When the Mets see Zach Wheeler leave, they know. They smell blood. They look around in the clubhouse. Yo, fellas, here we go. It's our game. We're going to take this over. It's very unfortunate to watch. And I can't believe how irritated I get. Because I already know. I know. My brain comprehends this. This is who they are. This is what they do. This is the team's identity. The bullpen is trash. Yet when a game like this happens, I can't help myself. I laugh. I really do laugh. Let me repeat this sentence because I don't know if it properly went through everybody's brains yet. Hector Neris dropped the baseball on the mound, which resulted in a balk in the ninth inning. One more time. Hector Neris dropped the ball on the mound in the ninth for a balk. That does not happen. That doesn't happen. I'm trying to relate it to something that it goes on in football. I, I don't know. A blocked punt at the end of the game that's recovered by the team that blocked it and they score a touchdown to win with seconds left. I mean, okay, you can kind of go with that. Let's go with that. It's something similar to that. It's obnoxious. It's crazy. It's ridiculous. I'm hurt. I shouldn't be this hurt, but I'm hurt. I saw a team that had DeGrom on the bump in the match, right? And I saw this Phillies team attack early. They were playing hard early. Gene Segura with a beautiful double. Andrew Knapp knocks in a run. He went opposite field bomb last time he faced DeGrom. And here he is roping some RBIs in. Hey, how are you? On top of that, Hazley, Quinn, they were putting hits together on DeGrom. He leaves after two innings, and he was frustrated. He was in the in the dugout throwing stuff down on the ground. And he's had injuries before, so they, they went down the road of, hey, let's take him out of the ballgame. But the Phillies, they had this mindset. They scored a handful of runs on DeGrom. They had this aggressive mindset of, hey, if we're going to get a chance, let's make the most of the opportunity because you are very limited in chances when DeGrom is on the bump. The dude's pumping 100, okay? Now, Wheeler was phenomenal as well when it comes to pumping high speed. I didn't really know what to expect with the fingernail issue, and here he is, first inning, 98, 99, pumping gas. Unreal to watch, but DeGrom, just a little bit more velocity, pumping triple digits. Once DeGrom left, though, it was almost as if, all right, okay, Gene Segura got a home run to tack on another run. It was 4 nothing. The Phillies were up 4 nothing. And then what? What happened? Where was that intensity? Where was that mindset, that aggressive mindset? Did they just assume the game was over? Hey, let's cash it in. We won this baseball game. Well, shame on you. Really, shame on you if that was the case. And it apparently did seem that it was the case. I skipped over some stats I wanted to read when it comes to Bryce Harper. 0-5 on the night. He's been hitting less than 200 in the last 30 days. All right? And through August 22nd, he was hitting 343 with an unbelievable OPS of 1.192. Since then, 158 with an OPS under 600. What Bryce Harper is going through is a 
abysmal, abysmal. And you would think when two players like JT and Reese Hoskins are out of the lineup, someone like Bryce Harper would step up. But it's been some ugly at-bats, striking out, looking overpowered, looking a little slow when it comes to swinging the bat. Looking like he's overthinking a ton, processing too much information. What we saw with Reese Hoskins earlier in the year, it has now transformed into Bryce Harper's problem. You want the positive? Reese Hoskins found a way to get out of it. You want the negative? There were a lot of games where it was super ugly and hard to watch. I'm not giving him a free pass. He deserves to get shredded because this is where you need your top guy to bounce. Back, really. You need the top guy to perform. This team is going down the same road that it has over the handful of seasons. September baseball, ugly baseball, losing baseball. It's on the big man that you signed to actually produce. And he's not. But I go back down this road. They were in a spot to win the damn baseball game. That had nothing to do with Bryce Harper. It had everything to do with the bullpen that Matt Klentak put together. And you see another night where Joe Girardi goes down the road of not utilizing a player that was an upgrade at the deadline. It's almost as if he's done with it. He's making a statement, I'm done with Hale. I'm done with Embry. I'm done with Workman. I'm done with these guys. Although you see them in the bullpen and you see them getting loose at times. Look, who did he go with in this one? Hector Naris, Adam Morgan. Who did he go with last game? None of the new acquisitions. And I think there's something to be said about that. Now, this episode of Sports Talk with Broads is sponsored by Orbit Energy and Power, and with over 20 years of experience in the industry, they are home to your solar experts in residential and commercial projects. Not only do they provide solar energy systems, they also provide water purification systems. You want the healthiest, softest, cleanest water for your family, backup energy services, battery storage, tree removals, electrical upgrades, emergency services, and more. If you want an upgrade to your home, Orbit Energy and Power is the place to go. Make sure you check out their information, their phone number, their website. It's all in the description. Oh, man. Alec Bohm looks good at first base. <laughs> I'm just trying to look for some positives. Alec Bohm actually looks natural at first base. I can't stand watching him play third. I can't. Does that now bring in a whole new element, though? JT Real Muto coming back. He might have to DH. I don't know if Reese Hoskins is going to come back. I know they're saying maybe it's possible, but it does seem like it's trending down the road of needing surgery. So I don't know if that's the case. I'm just trying to think. Because if he does play first base, because Alec Bohm can cost you a game. If they find a way, I can't believe I'm even saying this, but if they find a way to actually make the playoffs, although Gabe Kapler and the Giants are starting to cruise and really come up on them along with some other teams, but if they do find a way, Alec Bohm at third can literally cost you a game. At first base, he looks more comfortable, making some good plays, getting some double plays. Just looks natural. But with Reese, if he was available... What would that do? It would just, it would change so much. It would make things messy. JT, if he had to DH, it just adds a big block in the DH department and who plays where department. But I don't think it's necessary, not only because of the injury side of things. I don't think it matters because I don't think that this team is actually going to make the postseason. At what point do you walk out on that field and think, there's no chance? There's no chance because if we can't get through a game, because our bullpen is that bad, how are we supposed to ever win? You got to win with Nolan Wheeler. You have to win. Because this bullpen, it's going to blow up when they need to be utilized heavily because Zach Eflin can't go. Because Arietta can't go. I'm talking about banged up, there he is. I wonder if Medina's going to end up getting a call. They actually called up Mickey Moniak, their number one overall pick from just a handful of years ago. And he got called in to do a little pinch running. How about that? He stinks. What a waste of a first overall pick. You know who was third overall that year? Ian Anderson. You know what he's doing? Winning baseball games. You know for who? The Atlanta Braves. Imagine Sixto Sanchez still here. And imagine Ian Anderson in this lineup. Could you imagine? You would literally be throwing out Aaron Nola, Zach Wheeler, 
Although, you could argue maybe you wouldn't even sign Zach Wheeler if that was the case. But in our hypothetical, let's throw it in the mix. Aaron Nola, Zach Wheeler, Sixto Sanchez, Ian Anderson, and then a little Spencer Howard. And even though I'm not so juiced up about him at this point, Zach Eflin. If Zach Eflin's your five, you can live with it. He's very inconsistent, but it's a number five pitcher for a reason. You normally don't have stud elite pitchers as your number five. But that would be unbelievable. That would be incredible. And instead, it has turned into a legitimate nightmare. And whew, it's it's just it's crazy because they had a chance in the eighth. A couple guys on, couldn't do it. And what do you know? What do you know? The bullpen does it again. Thank the Lord this is a 60-game season. Because if I had to do this for 162, I would do it. It would probably be entertaining to you all because I would be red every time I hit the record button. I'd be, uh, you know, doing my standard throwing punches at the TV. It would be so entertaining, I'm sure. But I couldn't do it. I mean, I couldn't do it. I couldn't live that way. I'm struggling with the 60-game season. The season did fly by, though, no? Think about it. The stretch is here. There is barely any time left. And with the way that this is trending, it does not look pretty at all. Scott Kingery. I talked about Alec Boehm having some positives, right? Just trying to look a little optimistic here. <laughs> Scott Kingery. Seems like he's getting his groove back offensively. Woohoo. He had that crazy play where... He was at second base, made a nice play. He also had a, a, a poor play earlier trying to throw the ball to Alec Bohm at first. But here he goes, gets a ball, and he runs towards the base runner who's trying to go from third to home. And he runs towards him, and he makes this outstanding diving play. Looks like he got some dirt in his face. Rubbed it off, though, baseball guy. That's what you do. It's a nice play by Kingery. Just looking for some positives. Just looking for some positives. I thought there was a chance that Diaz would blow the game because, well, this is the New York Mets, and that is something that they do. And if you want to criticize the Phillies bullpen, have fun. By all means, have at it. But if you looked on the other side and saw Diaz, you go, hold on a second. He would fit perfectly in this bullpen because he does the same damn thing. He's worse than Hector Neris. He's worse than Workman. He's worse than these guys that we throw out there at the end of games thought maybe, just maybe, there would be a little bit of a chance that they would be able to do it. More than a little bit of a chance. Because as I stated, they're worse than what the Phillies had back there. But sometimes even bad bullpens find a way. And we've seen that this season for the Phillies. And uh, you've also seen the other side way too many times. Will Matt Clentac get fired? Phenomenal question, Broats. It's a phenomenal question that we're all hoping the answer is yes. I need to see them not make the postseason. And I alluded to this earlier, earlier today in my There's No Buzz Around the Phillies podcast, although here I am the same night pulling my hair out and taking toothpicks to the eye. Toothpicks? Yeah, sure, whatever. That works. Still painful. I'm never that guy. I'm never that guy that would rather see the team lose because I think it's beneficial to get a postseason run. I think it's beneficial for Aaron Nola to experience that type of atmosphere, for Zach Wheeler to go out there. Like I think it's important for these players to be in that moment. But with that being said, I can't deal with this Matt Clentak stuff anymore. You know, there was a time when they were winning 9-10, to and I said, huh, does Matt Clentak deserve a little bit of some praise for this deep lineup? Because the lineup is deep. There's no denying it. And I thought that was interesting. Someone brought that up to me, and, and I thought it was interesting. I saw it in the comments section. Because the lineup is deep. When guys are available and they're healthy, the lineup is a legit lineup. But do they overpay for guys because they're so bad at drafting? Because they can't actually develop these draft picks. And because of that, they need to go out and spend, and that's why their payroll is so much, and that's why they're stuck in this luxury tax issue. And that's a phenomenal point. The answer is yes, absolutely. Someone like Gene Segura, you pay all that money. 
And you know I'm not a Gene Segura hater, and he had a great game, four hits. He is a Mets killer, a Mets killer. I, I want to pull up these, these numbers, by the way, for Gene Segura because it is actually ridiculous to think about what he does against the New York Mets. Uh, Gene Segura in 103 plate appearances versus the Mets as a Philly. 385 batting average, 10 doubles, 2 triples, 6 homers, and 19 RBI. It truly is spectacular to see him do that consistently against this team. When looking at Matt Klintak, though, you are putting your team in a bad spot because you have to spend money on these players, which you should be able to get some prospects up to help. Now, Alec Bohm is one? Yes. But, but I question now, at this point, there's no one that really gets you going. We were waiting for Bohm. We were waiting for Howard. Now you, you just have slop. Now there's no one. Now what do you do? You got to start to rebuild this whole prospect pool, and that doesn't happen in one year. That takes a little bit of time. You got Stott at shortstop, but he's years away, and I would love to sign Didi Gregorius so he can stay here and he can fill the gap, fill the void until he's ready. But where are the studs now? I really hope they miss the postseason. Really, really. Really, I do. I, I think I really do. And it goes against everything I believe. It goes against everything that I stand by. But I think this is an issue. And every time I bring up Matt Klantak, I need to bring up John Middleton as well. Because he's the one that put him in the position. He's the one that says all these comments about how smart Matt Klintak is. How he is this next GM that knows everything. He's putting too much stock into Matt Klintak and it starts with him. Now, I don't hate John Middleton. I don't think that he's this massive, insanely horrendous, bad owner that's putting this team in the worst situation ever created. But I think he needs to make smarter moves, and it starts with the general manager. Because if you tell me, like this whole JT thing, for an example, if John Middleton thinks that he should be here, I don't think Matt Klintak's decision should matter. I don't think what Matt Klintak believes should matter if John Middleton thinks that JT Romuto should be here. So what that tells me is John Middleton doesn't believe that JT Romuto should be here. And I get the other side. You know, I think a lot of people are, you know, you need to, have to, 100% sign him because of what you gave up. Well, look at what the Sixers did with Tobias Harris. Now, I'm not saying I don't want JT Romuto. I, I do think you do need to bring him back. But I do see the other side as well. But but it all goes to John Middleton more so than Matt Klintak in that area. Because if Matt Klintak didn't want him and John Middleton did, well, it's simple, right? It's simple logic. JT Romuto would be signed here. So I do think that John Middleton needs to be better. But it starts with him firing Matt Klintak. And without postseason play, an expanded playoff form, and especially if the San Francisco Giants are the team that squeaks in, I think you might see an outcome that you would be happy with, and that's no McClintack. And I hope I'm right, because if I'm wrong, oh, wow, are we going to have some fun screaming into this microphone over and over and over again. We'll see, though. Time is running out. The clock is ticking. Not many games left. And they're not a good baseball team. They're just not. And they're extremely banged up. Guess what? That's not a recipe for success. I'm, I'm sure I'm not breaking much news here. How about J.D. Davis's night? He was creaming the ball. There you have it. There you have it. Thank you all so much for listening, and I will see you next time.